Hello, and welcome to Unco, a weekly interview podcast about what's unusual in tech. I'm your host, Timothy Buck. My guest this week is Owen Williams, a writer, developer, engineer, and marketer who was an editor for The Next Web before founding Charged. We talked about his experience building a newsletter business, emerging internet business models, working in tech from Amsterdam and New Zealand, whether it's time to end the yearly smartphone launch events, smartphone innovation in coming years, and the unusual state of the smart assistant market. Over the last month, I interviewed Jean McDonald, the founder of App Camp for Girls, Christy Lawrence, the founder of Plan App, Blair Reeves, an enterprise product manager, and Louis Mantia, iconographer and founder of Parakeet. If you'd like to support the show and hear more interviews like these, the best way to do that is by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash uncofm for as little as $1 a month. Hey, Owen, how's it going? Hey, good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's nice to finally speak to you. Yeah, you too. It's funny how Twitter like makes you feel like you know people for years, but you've never actually spoken on the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, it's been the nice thing about doing these interviews every week is yeah. I've gotten to meet at least well, on the phone, meet a lot of people that I've been talking right. to or following on Twitter for a long That's time. Fun. It's an excuse to just like hang out, right? I think the funniest thing is just hearing people's accents for the first time. Every time I'm like, oh, like you have your own internalized like Twitter voice, I think for the yeah. person. And then I like, I have the worst accent of all uh, being from New Zealand. So people are like, oh, you sound like a down under person. Yeah, I, I definitely didn't. Like you got on the phone and I was a little surprised. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize. exactly. You're just like, oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, so funny. Yeah. You can't translate that on Twitter. Like I wish there was some sort of like accent tag or something. I don't know. It just doesn't work. Especially when they're, when the people are like living in, I don't know, some yeah. major city, right? Like right. that, it, you never know what country they're in doesn't necessarily Absolutely. tie to the accent they have. I mean, it, it makes it confusing for me. I'm in Amsterdam. I, I'm from New Zealand. Like, <laughs> you just want right. to, like, you're screwed if you guess either way. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's funny. Well, well do you want to give my, uh, my listeners a, a little bit of a background of who you are and, and what you do? Yeah. Sounds good. I, uh, I'll try and keep it like too long, didn't read. But um, yeah, I'm Owen. Uh, obviously, I've already given you the spiel about New Zealand. Um, but I am a freelance UX writer slash writer person uh, in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Uh, I've been writing for a long time. I used to work at the Next Web. Um, and after that, and many other jobs before that, I actually um, was a software developer. So I have a rather quirky uh, job slash past life. Uh, having come from the technical side of things into actually writing. Um, and I moved into being uh, a freelancer last year. I launched my own business uh, that's called Charged. And I send these like, I was, I still, I, when you're making something for yourself, you struggle to put it in a box, but it's, it's a, it's like a morning briefing newsletter that I send uh, four days a week uh, in the same vein of, as kind of like stratechery, a few other things uh, with a few extras on top. Uh, so yeah, that's me. I feel like I do a, a bit of everything. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, I, uh, I've been, I've been living here for about four years now, so I feel, you know, pretty European at this point. Yeah. And were you in, you, you were in San Francisco before that or? No, I love you? this because everybody thinks I was, um, no, it's just, it's funny. I used to live in Wellington, New Zealand and the time zone overlaps so well. And I traveled so much cause I actually worked remote from, uh, Wellington. Um, and I used to travel a lot to San Francisco, like to, to cover whatever event or whatever. And I think I just gave the impression that I lived there, uh, cause I was awake when you all were and all that kind of thing. So, um, while I didn't live there, I basically might as well have. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I just assumed uh, yeah, because yeah. of the. Uh, that's funny how we do that. Yeah, I wonder no, how many I think other people I, think I do that with. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I think like the New Zealand time zone. It's I was saying to somebody yesterday is like it should be Silicon Valley's best kept secret. Like it overlaps kind of six to eight hours of I think six and a half hours of the business day, 
with San Francisco and it's not that far. And so, you know, if you're, if you're like down there, you can actually kind of work a job on San Francisco hours and get away with it. So that's what I was doing. <laughs> huh? Yeah. That's cool. I'm, I'm bad at time zones. I need to oh, look into that. There's, there's like some good apps for this stuff. I like having, having moved from New Zealand to here and then like working a lot with Americans as well. Like this is my nightmare perpetually. So, <laughs> so, so, um, I have a, I have a list of questions here for for nice. um, for you know what to ask you, but it, I'm going to kind of deviate a little bit um, uh, straight off the bat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like looking at my list, and um, you you mentioned that you started you started charged, which is like this newsletter. It's a business. How did how did you decide to do that? And, and what are, yeah, let's just start with that. How did yeah. you decide that this is what you're going to do? That's an interesting question. I, I like, I always wondered um, myself in a way, like these, these side projects that turn into businesses are always interesting because um, it almost happened by an accident. Um, mm -hmm. I think about, oh goodness, four years ago, I started sending like a weekly newsletter um, out just like, I don't know if I, I don't know if you feel like this way as well, but like blogging kind of like half died at some point. And I was thinking three or four years ago, I was thinking, oh God, Twitter's going to die at some point too. I was kind of worried about like, I don't know. I, I have used Twitter a lot and I have a nice short username and I was, I've invested so much in it. I was like, if it goes away, I have nothing. Uh, <laughs> so I started this newsletter and I started sending it um, once a week. It was just like, here's all the cool things I found. Uh, is like a hot take on whatever's happening. Um, and that kind of grew slowly, but gradually into, uh, I think today it's like 14 or 15,000 subscribers. I mean, it's not enormous, but it's, it's a decent size. And I've just been sending it on and off, uh, you know, every weekend for those whole four years. And, um, people just kept saying they loved it. I had this, this weird newsletters are weird and blogging is weird as well. Cause you kind of do it in isolation. And so you send this thing and it just like goes into the abyss and you never like really know, <laughs> where like if, if somebody loved it or not um and so what ha started happening was really weird i started getting all these in real life uh people being like oh, i really love that thing like you should you should keep doing it and so um right around when i left uh the next web or about a year and a half or two years ago i started thinking about uh what does it what does it look like to not do clickbait or like, what does it look like to do something without ads? I don't know. Like the whole industry is just in a weird kind of space right now that like this banner ads and like everybody hates them, but it's the only way to fund it. And I just, I always, I didn't ever want to be ad supported, but I enjoyed writing. Um, and I wanted to find a way to do it just like without being, I don't know, on, on those banner ads or on the Amazon thing or like whatever, um, like the affiliate program. Um, and so like it was kind of a year and a half ago, I started thinking about this daily newsletter and I saw Stratechery, um, which I absolutely love. And Ben Thompson is like, you know, a total machine. <laughs> I can never mm -hmm. live up to this. Um, but I saw the gap, like he's, he's very like nuanced and like insanely deep stuff. But I saw this gap that like uh, people beyond the industry actually want something kind of on that level, but a little bit dumbed down. Like, and I, I should have a better pitch here, but it, basically I wanted a way to make tech more accessible for people outside our industry. Like I wanted anybody, you know, like the CEO of Whole Foods, I guess that's a bad example because Jeff Bezos owns it, but whoever, uh, to subscribe and be able to get the take uh, of the day and then walk into their meetings and sound like a smart ass. Um, and so, so what I, oh, that's actually a really good, yeah. that is a good pitch. I like yeah, that. that that's, that's, that's kind of it. I just need to like nuance it a bit more, but, uh, it's only been nine months. So I'm still figuring it out. Um, and so what I started doing is just every morning, four days a week, I thought, uh, seven days is too much. Uh, <laughs> so Tuesday to Friday, um, a few, so people pay for this and every, every morning you get kind of like by 9am, like a summary of yesterday's news. And I think the big uh, at least competitive advantage I have is like, first of all, I worked in this like whole industry actually in the trenches and a lot of writers haven't, um, you know, you, you read your typical blog. I don't know. I don't want to pick on the verge or something, but like, for example, many of them wouldn't have worked in the industry, uh, historically. Uh, so I've got that angle and then I'm not loyal to any one organization. There's so many daily news newsletters out there. Most of them are just run by these big orgs. Um, whereas I'll link to the source and I'll like tell people if there's paywalls and like all that kind of thing. So I kind of try and 
extract all the value out, save the time. I don't do rumors. Um, I have all these like rules, at least internal ones that I don't publish anywhere. Um, but just to keep the quality really high. Um, and then on top of that, I, it's like community focus as well. So a lot of the content, uh, we have discussions in our, in our discourse or whatever it's called. And then, um, those people get featured the next day. And so it's like really this dynamic relationship rather than just like, here is me with my thoughts. Uh, even though it does feel like it sometimes, uh, sometimes, but genuinely, genuinely being subs- like quite surprised, uh, how well it's done, to be honest. Like I started it and I was like, you know what? I'll just start asking for money. You know, like what's the worst that can happen Two people pay and I stop doing it. Um, and to date, I think, um, I think I have around 350 people paying right now, which is fantastic. Like it's, it's, I mean, this is, enough money to pay my rent uh, and kind of keep doing it which i just love um i really i really love the fact that i'm not you know beholden to views or inflating some metric or whatever as long as like my metric is do people read this every day and are they getting value out of it um and that's that's pretty rewarding i mean i feel like i just uh, like self answered three other questions just now but yeah. um, <laughs> um but yeah i guess like the the very back to the heart of your question really like why did i do this i was i just got really tired of the cycle of news and i i think i maybe saw what we're going through uh as a society a few years out i think like most of us just like see too much content um mm-hmm. and it feels hard to wade through it all like if you're not, if you're not, like pushing f5 on TechCrunch every like five minutes you're gonna miss something um and half the time it's inconsequential but then there's that like really the thing you needed to know and that kind of bums me out um, it bumps me out that it's like so fast paced. It's all about the big companies. Um, so I'm trying to carve out a niche in the middle somewhere between Ben Thompson and TechCrunch. I don't know. It's, a, it's just really interesting that people will pay for content all of a sudden. I think that's fascinating. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like it. The, the interesting thing about the newsletter mm-hmm. approach is that you don't need the scale that mm-hmm. traditional news media needed oh and, God, and yeah. they, they tried to do paid content and apart from a handful that have been successful mm-hmm. most of them have failed at that but it's yeah. because they had a newsroom they had a marketing department they had right. all this overhead they had a building in downtown mm-hmm. chicago or whatever it may be and what ben really kind of showed the world and he was the yeah. first one i knew but like mm-hmm. i know there's others right there's yeah there's there's others in sports i, I don't follow sports but i know that i've heard people talking about it there there are people who write about sports and people pay them for it but like if you get you know like you said 300 Mm -hmm. people that's significant money for an individual absolutely and then and and you you get that up into the a thousand Mm -hmm. uh a a, a thousand at ten dollars is you know like you're you're getting (laughs) It's like, oh, whoa, okay. Uh, and then, oh, this is and serious. then the, 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 the way that that scales is insane. Like, yeah. uh, it's like if you get a thousand people and then you get 10,000 people, it's literally the same work every day. Exactly, exactly. And I think um, I had always been hoping to find some sort of like, uh, like I said before, like revenue stream that didn't make me beholden to some boss or like some sort of ad network, whatever mm-hmm. the entity might be. Um, and I think Ben Thompson did do a great, uh, you know, job of showing how lucrative it could be as well. Like I think he has probably in the order of 15,000 subscribers now. And I'm like, goodness me, if that's like the market size of a paid newsletter, like there's way more space in this market. I think this, I think that the the one-to-one relationship that you get just out of like, I reply to everybody who replies to it, you know, like, um, and that's not that many people, but if somebody has a question or wants something in the next one, like I can actually do that. And I think that the value from that alone, uh, compared with this like mass market news thing is is just like a really interesting paradigm paradigm shift. I think people are just really tired of like inflated giant things. (laughs) I agree. Yeah. And that that actually, uh, I've talked about this on my show before, but that's actually why, I've enjoyed the information, mm. which oh, I know is so good. It, it, it's just so, so good. And they're, it, it's actually been kind of, as they've grown and been producing more content, mm. it's actually <laughs> been, I've been reading it less. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. Like it's part so of the whole value of it was yeah. like, it was like one or two things a day. And they had that little piece at the top where it's oh, like, yeah. this is what you need to take away from this. Yeah. And if it was something I didn't want to read, 
two thousand words on, mm-hmm. I was fine. I would just read that top section, and I would feel like I like yeah. had accomplished something. Yeah, I think that, I think there's there's something there. Yeah, I think so, and I, I I think there's a place for both sides of it. But I think um, given how uh, I don't know how fast paced, especially this industry is, it's just impossible to be knowledgeable in every area unless you're like really reading everything. And so mm-hmm. hiring somebody else basically to do it for ten dollars a month is not that bad. Um, you kind of you're cheating a little bit, and I, I, I kind of see it's weird actually. I see two kinds of people actually. Um, I had assumed I would be going after like the executives who don't have time to read things. Uh, mm-hmm. That definitely came to be true. Uh, that's one demographic, and interestingly enough, the other demographic is like young graduates, and these are people who just don't know like what they need to know in the industry or like, well, what do I follow? Oh, or, like, how do I sound smart in that interview? And so uh, it's been really interesting to see that as well. I think it's, you know, for, for those of us who have been around for a long time, like we're reading hacker news or we're reading like whatever thing, but new graduates don't have that. Like they don't know. And like the internet's there already. So it's kind of hard to know like where to go. It's, just, it's like, I love having my own uh, expectations question like that. It was quite surprising. Yeah, that, that I mean, that actually makes a lot of sense, and and I, I think the beauty from the whole the whole idea is like a lot of us. Uh, uh, there are so many niches out there that yeah. could be filled for that because you don't need that many people, right? Mm-hmm. Like a thousand people is a yeah. is a significant business. Like right. that, that's a real deal. Like yeah thing it's life-changing right? basically right right it's like literally a life-changing business especially if you live anywhere other than like san francisco yeah. um, <laughs> i wish i lived in new zealand that's all i'm saying like look the cost of living in amsterdam isn't bad but damn if i was doing this in new zealand i would be like living on a beach or something by now <laughs> yeah but it's just it's just like foreign currency works in, a, in weird ways when you live in a place like new zealand you know um and you know maybe one day i'll go back and do that <laughs> Yeah, that that's funny. I I I do think it's interesting. I I mean, again, I wasn't really planning on talking about this, but the business models of uh, of these types of things are really interesting to yeah. me. You have like the Ben Thompson's model, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, and then you you kind of have this. And I haven't seen it as successful, but like the the Patreon. Oh yeah, just support support this person that you're interested mm-hmm. in. I know that like. Um, I listened to Dubai Friday and I think they have like, they get like four or five grand uh, wow. a month. Um, and uh, let me, I'm just going to look it up. Uh, I think like uh, Hello Internet, I, mm. I don't really listen to that regularly, but I know it's a really interesting podcast by two relatively like internet famous people. And uh, right. Um, let me see. Shoot. Uh, I, I was talking and I stopped typing and <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just end up typing the whole sentence into the computer. <laughs> I typed podcast instead of Patreon. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hello internet, boom. Uh, yeah, they get four thousand dollars per episode. That's per crazy. episode. Wow. So they do two episodes and they have ads in the episodes. Oh wow. So that's how, like, see, that's fascinating because I think like uh, before you would really have to like, the only way to really make this work, you would have to either have a lot more ads or like put ads on your website. And now there's like these, all these models where people are like, please just take my money so I don't have to listen to another Squarespace ad. Like, oh my goodness. Right. Yeah. And that's what Dubai Friday does, right? That Oh my gosh. They do 15 grand a month. What? Wow. That's amazing. Just like to that's run a crazy. podcast. I love it. Yeah, and and what's cool is like all of those that each of the people on that show. I mean, it's three of them, so it's down to like five grand a person. But still, right. that's a lot. That's, I mean, that's a that's lot of money. Great. I I would take that. <laughs> take that. Move to New Zealand. You're great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so I, funny. I, yeah, I just find these these things so interesting. Like, there's especially because they're not the. Uh, basically like the first way to make money on the internet was get millions and millions of people to look at your stuff and then yeah. put ads on it that make like a half a cent each or whatever. Or trick them and, into clicking them. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and, 
And that just seems so much more overwhelming, right? Absolutely. To think of like, oh, could I actually build a, a, a YouTube channel that gets, uh, you know, a hundred mm. million views a year? I, I don't, I don't know. Right. Like right. that would be, that, that's not like the type of thing that I would want to do. Yeah. But I think if it's I think, like, like it took a demographic shift to get there as well. Like, I think we had to go through all of that ad stuff for people to realize the value of their time. Like it kind of sucks that we got there. Um, but we went through that phase of like, nobody pays for anything. And then like, I don't know, Spotify, ca- yeah, Spotify came along and kind of proved to everybody like, no, it's easier not to pirate things. Just use this fancy app. <laughs> uh, and so on. Like it happened a lot through to a lot of industries. And I think now you're seeing it with all of these creative things. You're just like, if I can like support this person, I'll do it. Like it's $5 or $10 a month. Um, you know, like I'll probably forget about it. Uh, and I think, yeah, <laughs> that's a big, I mean, there's a challenge there as well. Um, but I think, I think if you do it right, it doesn't need to be something that you like, I don't think that people I email forget about it. And that's the nice thing is like, if they're a creator that you're really consuming, it's very difficult to forget about that. Um, and, and I think the big problem that I see right now is there's a really big missing link in the middle. Like Patreon is really good, but I don't, this is, this is my own personal meanderings here, but I don't really like, um, the, the, it's not so much the big model, but it kind of feels like it. Like I don't, yeah. I, I originally planned to use Patreon and I was like, I don't, I don't really like want people to feel like they need to back me or I can't eat. Uh, <laughs> um, and that wasn't like, that's not how I wanted to run my business. Like, it's, it's not like, please do this so we can do this. Um, it was more like, yeah a different approach. And I think there's something in the middle there. Men before used to do it, but it's gone because it's now part of Patreon. Oh, what, what is it? I don't, I didn't know what memberful was. Oh, so memberful did, was, um, was the, the platform that, um, people like Ben Thompson actually use uh, in the middle to kind of, uh, like facilitate their content. So it's kind of hard if you're a creator to like take money. And I, that's kind of why Patreon exists. I think it's like, they take care of the payment gateways and like all of those things. Um, memberful was like a very ur- early version of that, that integrated with like WordPress um, to put a oh. payment wall on your content, but they just acquired them last Friday. Oh yeah. Huh. So now it's part of Patreon. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense to combine them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I could see why Patreon would want to purchase Memberful. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's been something I've been I've been working on too because mm-hmm. I have a Patreon for this show, but I, I felt a little. I, I have the same feeling mm-hmm. you felt, right? Like I, <laughs> yeah, it's I, I don't really like asking people like, "Hey, go give me money so that yeah. I'll keep doing this," because if at some point, if I don't get any money, I probably won't do this. Right. Uh, right. But that's weird. I, I don't know. I, it's yeah. also, I also enjoy doing this, right? It's exactly. Like, I, like we were saying before, a, a big interesting part of doing an interview every week is I get to talk to an interesting person right. every week. Like even if I wasn't recording it, that would be really cool. Yeah. This is um, just like the excuse. I love it. <laughs> yeah. But, but I would also like to be able to like, uh, if it is making money, then it, it can take like more of a priority, right? I can get, Absolutely. Like, I don't know. It, 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 that's it how I be... looked at it as well, actually. I think that's how yeah. it's changing the creator model is like, a lot of these creators really want to do stuff. They are serious. Like the weekly thing was fantastic. And people always said to me like, look, I want more of this. And I was like, great, but how? Like I, I struggle to give the weekly one priority at all because it's free. And like, that's something that I still struggle with, you know, like I'm like, ah, those people can wait till next week. And, and then, uh, but, but if you, if you reach that point, having money involved really changes that. I think like I haven't, I, it's actually kind of terrifying to me. Like ask me in two more years, but uh, I, I think I'm about to heat, like reach the one year mark and I haven't missed oh, wow. a day yet. And that's like kind of creepy to me. I was freaking out when I started because like four times writing every week for 52 weeks is like i'm a writer and it sounds awful to me (laughs) so uh yeah but it's actually been the most enjoyable thing ever because like because there was money and because i had that relationship with people it was just so much better than like making a blog post and tweeting it into the abyss yeah it's 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 a very different like weird it's a weird thing i really really will say that we're talking about email (laughs) like that's the weirdest thing yeah it's funny how it's kind of gone everybody's been trying to kill email since right. i can remember and 
it's it's hard to do because it's 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 actually it's good. it does certain things it really works. really well yeah yeah i think well i i do have one more take on this uh and i'll let the uh email horse die but uh <laughs> the um the thing with email i think that the reason it came back when it did is very much so because it's the only thing that doesn't have an algorithm involved at all um mm-hmm. and you know you, it's so hard to avoid that now you go on instagram and all people want is like the most recent feed and it's the same on every platform and the algorithm is great except when it's not and there's your email inbox and like it's the only place you can send something out to people and they'll actually definitely at least see it like you have a 90 yeah. percent chance that they'll see it and that's a big difference whereas like on twitter you had to pay to do that and that's i think why it matters still I kind of like cling on to that as like, please don't ever change email. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's actually, uh, it's funny. These like old technologies are the ones that do that. It's, it's right. similar with, with even podcasts, right? Yeah. Like, once somebody subscribes, then they're going to see it every, every single one, yeah. right? Every, every single episode is going to be downloaded or, or show up on their device or exactly. whatever it may be. Um, and and one that that makes <laughs> that means each time you're out and you're like tweeting about your new episode or whatever it may be uh, it's not like you're starting from scratch there are already everyone who subscribed already has already got it you're not trying to tell them about it that's what i absolutely right you're trying know. to tell new people yeah and it's so funny like all of these things are based on just old web technology that everybody thinks is yeah. dead like rss everyone's like nobody uses that and then <laughs> this podcasts which is just like a great example of open web tech actually being really useful still. Um, and so, I don't know. I, I think there's a lot, I think it's easy to forget and maybe this is my uh, hottest take so far, but like, it's easy to forget how much opportunity there is on those old things still. Um, you know, in the podcast world, even speaking of monetization, I saw that um, Marco Arment has been tweeting about like letting people uh put payment links in their RSS feed and he'll honor them, which is amazing. Like, I love that. And I hope that's a thing forever. <laughs> um, and I just like that, like the whole, the whole weight is shifting in that direction. And I, I think, I, I hope that this is the way it keeps going. Yeah. Yeah. My, my only fear with it is that, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't want podcasting to kind of follow the same path as the rest of the internet yeah um <laughs> you know yeah exactly i'm, I'm like people are beginning to realize oh there's something here there's something here and then you know hasn't it been the slowest burn of all time though like i love that like podcast ca- i had a podcast on my ipod nano or something uh years ago and uh you know like now everyone's like you know that podcast thing it's burgeoning industry <laughs> what <laughs> I feel like I've heard somebody say that every year yeah. since I first, oh, like yeah. I had the iPod classic before it was yep. a classic, the, the, what was it? I think it was the video, like the first one that yeah. played video. And I was listening on that to podcasts in mm-hmm. middle school. Wow. And uh, yeah. And, and, and uh, even then people were like talking about how, right. you know, it's, this is growing. And I mean, it was growing, but there, people are just saying the yeah. exact same things now it's the year of the linux uh on desktop like it's, it's yeah, the same yeah, thing exactly. like it's never gonna happen <laughs> oh. well the, yeah the only thing is like all these bigger companies and stuff coming into mm. to podcasting like mm-hmm. I, I don't know like seeing people like casey neistat mm-hmm. and his wife do a show yeah, and like nuts. that uh, i mean like he the fact that he even sees it as something that's worth his time. Especially when, he's famous you know, on YouTube. Like, why does he have, need a podcast? Like, that's just wild to me. Um, and I think I think the other thing that's changing is tooling is catching up finally. I think for podcasters, like, today we're recording on this Zencaster thing. Like, I think until recently it was just like you had to hack your way to get it to work anyway. You had to know what, like, to do to record this call. And you had to know about RSS and all of those things. And I think, like, now we're coming to the point where the technology's maturing. I don't know why it took so long. It makes no sense to me. Um, like Simplecast is fantastic. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's it's like this whole business is popping up around like making it less terrible to make a podcast. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of them. There there's a bunch of new like uh, posts and stuff that like you know every everybody was like Libsyn and. Mm. Uh, whatever oh, yeah. one the old ones that everybody's Blueberry. used for 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and now there seem to be every time somebody interesting starts a new podcast, mm-hmm. it seems to be for one of these new yeah. hosts. Like there's there's a there's a handful of them, mm-hmm. um, and they they come with like a nice looking website. Oh yeah, nice like all this other stuff. Whereas, um, I actually host. Um, I have another show with mm-hmm. Stephen Aquino. Mm-hmm. Uh, about accessibility in tech. Oh yeah, and um, we host that just on Squarespace. Oh wow! Uh, and uh, it it actually works really well. Um, so in the like two and a half months between me starting this show and that show, right? Uh, like I initially wanted to do this show with Squarespace too, but they didn't have like any sort of analytics. Oh, they wow. didn't have all this other stuff, and so I was like, nah. <laughs> and I went, I, I, I went with Libsyn, right? And then two months pass, and I'm looking into it again, right. and they had added all of that oh, wow. stuff. That's wild. And I was like, I was like, okay. I mean, they don't have like built-in analytics, analytics, yeah. but they have a, a field that you can just have a oh, wow. basically like a link to uh, analytics providers, and yeah. it, as long as you have that filled, then you're good. That's wild. And so I was, I was set. I was like, okay, well now I don't need to pay for hosting. Right, I right. should switch this over too, but it's such a pain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like it, it's it's really not easy to, sw- to switch well, over. No, I mean, so. that's the thing is like there's small parts that are solved, but there's all that stuff. I think the podcasting thing is so funny. Like you even mentioned this before, like the, the analytics thing, this made me laugh like internally. I was like, oh my goodness, we've had analytics on the internet for, I don't know, 10 years. <laughs> like, I ran a podcast myself for two years and we had no idea who was listening. <laughs> Like, well, this is probably people <laughs> listening. Um, you kind of put it, like, it was kind That's of like funny. the most blind faith there is. Like, oh, I'll just put this MP3 into the world and see what happens. <laughs> That's, That's funny. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. That, 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 that's interesting. Um, so I was going to ask you about mm-hmm. the differences between like the Bay Area and you not working in <laughs> I the see Bay why Area. We pivot. But, but, but I, I thought that you had lived here, but I, I guess I can still kind of ask because you've you've lived in you know New Zealand, mm-hmm. working in tech, mm-hmm. and now you're living in Amsterdam. Yeah, oh my kind goodness. of doing the same. Uh, what what is it? What is it like doing that? What is it like being in, in those smaller smaller areas, but still you know major yeah, locations? Yeah, I love it. Um, it's really interesting, actually. Like. Uh, it's interesting seeing how each country wants to be San Francisco. <laughs> like, I just, it's so funny. Every, every, like in Europe, it's a really weird thing. And we have it in New Zealand too. They're always like, Amsterdam is the Silicon Valley of Europe. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's please don't like, I don't want it to be like, it'll just be a bad clone. Um, and everybody does this. And like the startups are there and like all that kind of thing. But it has been really interesting I mean, I grew up in New Zealand, um, so maybe I'm biased, but I think the environment there is really quite good for making startups. The biggest problem they have is um, limited access to capital. And so, I mean, this is (laughs) famous for everywhere, Um, but the most successful businesses in New Zealand, like we have multi-billion dollar businesses. We have a company called Zero. It's X-E-R-O. I worked there a few years ago and that's like, that's the most notable success. And that, I think that took 220 million from Peter Thiel back in the day. And now they're worth 2 billion. Um, and that's like an accounting cloud thing, taking on into it. Um, and the reason that even started is like basically two things. Like this, there's, there's good engineers in New Zealand. Um, they're just all doing it on a shoestring budget, which is probably a good approach. Um, and the time zone is really good and we have great internet. Uh, I think nobody really knows this, but like New Zealand is pretty well wired up for fiber internet most people can get up to a gig at the house. It's all like, it's a weird regulated thing that they did. And like, nobody owns the phone lines. And so like, there's this company that has to do it. You can get fiber to your house for free. It's wild. I miss it. Um, And so I think that was really conducive to it. But the biggest problem there was being starved of capital. And then I left New Zealand because (laughs) it's really sad to say this. It's there's like 4 million people there. Right. So like, I don't know, is that the size of the Bay area? (laughs) Like, it's kind of right, it's yeah. terrible uh, and so you really you really hit your potential pretty quickly if you're like young and looking for career stuff and so i moved here because uh, i had a job for a company here and it kind of looked appealing on paper um i actually tried to move to san francisco but there was all sorts of visa stuff and like all you know like there's all those things uh, it just worked out that i came here and um 
what I discovered was actually Amsterdam has a pretty impressive startup scene as it stands. And I think there's a lot of things that led to that. I mean, Europe, uh, like all of these companies have their kind of like headquarters here actually in Amsterdam now, because the government's made it really appealing, appealing to move here. You get like a big tax break uh, as an expat, you get uh, all sorts of like benefits and you can like the work lifestyle is better. I, like I worked at two different companies here and at the last one I worked at before I went solo, uh, I, I worked four days a week. Like, I joined the company and they're like, all right, this is going to be your salary. And they're like, okay, cool. Uh, what's, what, how many days do you want to work? And I was like, sorry, what? <laughs> like, what? Um, and so that was, that was really refreshing. Um, the, the Dutch really value that life balance, you know? Um, and I, if I had to compare with San Francisco, I imagine it's probably pretty difficult. Uh, like, um, yeah. like the Dutch, they, they really value that. And I, I really respect it because they'll, they'll get everything done and they'll go home a day early it's <laughs> really bizarre You're like you know there's all this talk about the three or four day work week and how base camp has created it and there's like a whole country doing it here it's not like it's not by default of course um like you often have to negotiate it but it is interesting to see that exist and the the, the vacation time is great and then um as a business starter entrepreneur whatever uh, I was genuinely surprised. Okay, there's two things. First of all, there's like the language barrier, which makes it interesting. Like I'm not very good at Dutch. Uh, I've lived here for four years. I wish I had a better excuse uh, for not knowing it. <laughs> I just don't have one. Um, it's it's The problem with Amsterdam is it's really easy to get by without um, mm-hmm. learning because the Dutch are just so good at English. And it, like, I think yeah, they find I it frustrating. With, yeah. I was there with my wife yeah. last year and we didn't even like worry about no, it. No, we you, were like, fine. You have one awkward encounter and it never happens again. Like it's just insane how chill it is. And so it's really hard to learn as a result. Um, but the business environment's perfect. Like aside from awkward, like tax authorities sending you Dutch letters and you just being confused all the time. Um, they give you all sorts of tax breaks and like whatever for the first few years to help you get off the ground. And like all of that stuff, I just love. I, I think it's cool that, you know, for your first, I think for the first three years, you get 10K discount on your tax. And I was just like, seriously, this is amazing. You know, like you don't have to worry about it because those first three years, you're like, what if nobody pays me? What if I don't get a gig or all that kind of thing? So it's been really quite uh, refreshing in that regard. And of course, like there's the healthcare, but, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, like a European meme, I think at this point, like uh, yeah. it's fantastic that the the thing I will say is, um, even in New Zealand, I would have to pay quite a lot of money uh, to have a decent healthcare as a freelancer. Like it, it's free in New Zealand, but as a self-employed person, you do have to pay extra premiums. Um, and here, this, they don't even care. Like if you like if you have a job or not, you're still having health insurance. Why do they care? Uh, so uh, that that was a big helper for actually being able to do it. I don't know if I would have done it. You know, like I have so much respect for people in the US who do it. It's just it's so scary otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, starting a business here is, and and doing it full time mm. is a is a big it's right. a big scary thing. Yeah, which is which is why a lot of people do it while they hold other jobs, yeah. right? Um, so they'll they'll keep their nine to five and then they'll start the business from six to midnight yeah, yeah. or whatever it may be. Yeah, they squirrel away at night. I mean, I did like I'll admit I did that for years. Uh, you know, like it's I think every every. Uh, person who's doing this stuff has overlapped at some point and i think it's a valuable thing to do <laughs> you know jumping in the deep end with zero dollars is probably pretty dangerous uh, yeah <laughs> so i would advise it but no i think i think the way that the dutch arranger just made it so much easier to uh call it at some point you know as I, I had a few client gigs and a few other different things and um when i saw that the discount was there and like uh there was very little risk i was just like you know what like why don't i do it like it's when else are you going to do it? I feel crazy doing it in Europe. I will say like, it's just, you know, like there's a language barrier, there's all the rules and I don't know all the nuances, but it's so far so good. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Th- that's really good. So I, I actually noticed that uh, I was, I read your mm. motherboard article oh, yeah. yesterday. Love it. Um, the hottest take. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm I'm loading it oh, so I can perfect. give people. It's the latest uh, one. Right? It's time to end the yearly smartphone oh, launch event. Is that the latest? Yeah, one? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, um, maybe just give like a 
one minute overview I love of your it. point. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll try and keep it even to like twenty seconds. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think the too long didn't read was like I watched that Samsung unpacked event. When, when was that? It was like last week. It was a Samsung mm-hmm. event in New York. It was like this is crazy flashy event, and it's like here is our latest rectangle. And so the the article is basically saying like okay it's very clear at this point that we're starting to top out on the smartphone, like innovation curve. Like we got to call it before it's too late. <laughs> uh, it's starting to feel like I'm watching like the Simpsons where like, they just won't end the show. Um, and I think, I, I don't know. I can't think of a, a company that does laptop events. For example, like you don't see anybody going out there. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Actually, Microsoft is doing that because they're doing some weird stuff, which I love. Um, but you don't see that many other industries doing this. And I think we've got to stop it. <laughs> it's just terrible. Like Samsung got up there and they're like, it's a rectangle and it does phone things. And that was nothing really new to say. And I think everybody's just burning out on that, I think was the point of it. Like at some point we're all like, we, we're just using it. It's a thing in your pocket. So under one minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I think, I think you, you're hitting on, uh, a feeling mm. i don't know if i don't i don't know if <laughs> like in all of the specifics of like somebody could definitely come back yeah. and say and i actually think um uh, i uh I, I ended my subscription a while ago but i still get uh, above avalon every uh every day just until like the year ends out or whatever and um his his uh yesterday article was like uh literally a response to your i love uh, it post. did you see that <laughs> no but i i'm gonna read it after this i love that stuff <laughs> the title is the the title is peak smartphone innovation absurdity oh i love it uh <laughs> so, i love it i, I miss blog uh, wars <laughs> yeah except for his is behind a paywall ah, so it. uh yeah uh yeah it's um but basically his point was like I mean, his is an, his, he writes about Apple, mm-hmm. right? So his point is basically just like, it's still valuable to Apple. Yeah. Uh, and it definitely is, oh, right? Absolutely. Like there, if you go into the specifics, it, like it makes sense why people are doing this. But I think what you are more getting at is not like trying to argue why for a business reason yeah. we shouldn't do this, but more just generally like, eh, it's not really moving as yeah. quickly. And maybe do it even less if often. they're still doing them. <laughs> maybe, maybe, that's a bit maybe, maybe, or maybe we shouldn't watch them. Yeah. Right. Like, right. Like, I, I didn't watch the Samsung stuff no. and I haven't in a long time just because it's like, uh, I'll see, I'll see MKBHD's yeah, thing yeah. on it. And uh, then that will take, you know, 10 minutes and it'll be a better take than the hour and a half they spent talking about it. Yeah. So. Exactly. Um, I think that's like maybe more what I'm trying to get at. And I think, look, I've, if I'm going to give anybody credit that should and it kind of has to keep doing it, it is Apple. I think like this is their marketing engine or whatever. But I think that maybe mm-hmm. the nuance here is even they're going to run out at some point of like things to point at. And I think last year was the exception to that rule in terms of like they had enough stuff that they've been storing up for a long time. And I think it's going to be, uh less frequently in the future so you know like i i imagine like this year will be like a great improvement to face id and like some other stuff um but i imagine next year is going to be a big challenge like i don't know i don't know i mean maybe they pull something crazy out but i guess what i'm trying to get at is uh it, maybe it doesn't need to be so elaborate or like maybe it doesn't need to be three hours long <laughs> like I can't yeah. believe that we watch these like it's it's such a tech bubble thing probably although the Apple event is still wildly popular as well just with normal people um I it's kind of just fascinating to me that we watch these 2 hour infomercials like especially now like you're looking at a smartphone industry that is absolutely slowing down um and they all know it <laughs> like and that's why you're seeing these weird things start to happen as well um like the Samsung one I made the point in the article I think they talked for the phone about like half an hour and then the other hour and a half was uh, a numerous ecosystem things. And Apple was starting to do the same as well. Like if you look at Apple events, and this is why Apple is good at what it does. It's like they've got 12 other things they can announce alongside it because that's their release cycle. And Samsung's are like, we partnered with Spotify and we got this like four day Fortnite exclusive. <laughs> like what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's like they they realized that this phone. I mean, it, it it 
I'm sure it's a, a good phone and it's an improvement on last year's, exactly. but it's not like that. The, the, it's not sign- enough better from last year to exactly. get a bunch of people to, to upgrade. And, and, and that may be okay because like upgrade cycles are extending and it's way better than the one from four years ago. And so that person may buy it, but um, it just, it's, it's definitely slowing down. Yeah. And I think what we'll start seeing is uh, I think even like you'll see stuff like the Apple event, I don't know, this is my outside, like, guess I'm not uh, above Avalon or anything, but having watched this and I think I've watched every iPhone event for years. And I think you start seeing them shift away from like talking about the device so much as like what it can do for you. Like it's very, very Mm -hmm. nuanced on the whole ecosystem now. Like a lot of the iPhone stuff is like, and it does this with your HomePod and it does this with your like whatever. And I think that's a, where it's going and it, like apple you can see that on their quarterly earnings and stuff they're trying to spread that money around a little bit uh and i think it's i think it's a smart play and i think samsung is trying but like oh my goodness I'd, what industry does these splashy events i can't I, again i'm like i'm trying to think of like does the car industry do this i guess tesla did for a while um but the, i think there's yeah, only many tesla still does. yeah i mean elon musk loves that stuff but I think there's only so many ways to spin a rectangle. <laughs> and I think if you would um, if you would go on stage and say, hey, look at this, it's like a laptop, uh, like it's faster than last year. That's where the struggle I see, you know, I don't know if it's two years out, but four or five years out, like there's no way that this, this is sustainable. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think it'll be interesting to see what that transition looks like. Mm. I know that, like, uh, I mean, that, well, Apple Watch is what, mm. like three years old oh, now? Yeah. And when it came out, it was like, you know, not really that great, mm. but it was new and exciting. Oh, and it was and fabulous. And now it's yeah. actually, yeah. and then now it's like, uh, it, it's it's a massive business. It's like a, it's, it, it, whether you like them or not, mm-hmm. like they are destroying the competition. I miss and, my Apple Watch. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had the, I still have the original one, yeah. but the battery it's like it's just not good enough anymore oh, absolutely same problem um, i had um at some point i think like it needs a battery replacement but they don't do it yeah so and uh, so that basically the way they have me thinking this shows how how much how good they are at marketing uh <laughs> they have me thinking that i'll probably get one in the fall right um when they update oh, and yeah. that, that could be some interesting things like that that's where i actually see more interest mm-hmm. coming this fall is like like AirPods are really good and they have been around two years. Yeah. So they're probably going to be updated. Exactly. The, you know, like the, the watch is basically looks the same for three yeah. years or his new bands. That's like so, the joke. It's like, his yeah, 12 so, new colors. So like, cool. <laughs> so like fingers crossed, they like do a, an update to the way that it looks. Yeah. Right. Um, and th- that is actually more exciting to me than the, the new phone i mean i will probably if they have the like a plus size version of the 10 yeah yeah that would be nice but it, again that's a niche thing exactly like how many i mean it, it would be good for me but how long can you talk about it as well like cool it's right larger yeah. and i think i think like apple has always been good at like stretching it for longer and i think like my uh, longer take on all of this i had to write it in my newsletter recently but like if you look at the earnings you know, Apple's the only one that's growing and that's great because they saw this coming and they made an iPhone that costed more. Um, and I think they're really experts at like mashing all of this together to make it look really positive. Uh, you know, like mm-hmm. they, they're finding the next wave, I guess. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah. But it's, a, it's an ecosystem play. I think it's absolutely smart. And like everybody else is trying to figure this out and it just looks like awkward. And how much, how much time do we have for this? Like, I don't know. I feel like one year Samsung's going to try this and then it'll just be like an empty room. <laughs> like, cool, it's a phone. <laughs> well, well the, the problem though is like the, again, getting back into mm. how our media system works. Oh, yeah. Like these people need things to talk about, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? They, they, they need, I mean, even we in like year writing, you need things to write about. I need yeah. things to talk about on this show. But like, it's different in that because like the show's an interview, I can talk to anybody about their life or whatever. It doesn't have to be what's happening next. And for you, you're mostly just like compressing mm-hmm. what other people, yeah. what all the news and making it 
you know, more useful, yeah. making, telling people, making it more useful and telling people what, what they yeah. need to know about. But, um, these, these, these big organizations that have to get millions and millions of clicks on things mm-hmm. every day, or they're, you know, gonna get fired. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Like, it's like, well, they're gonna, the, the, they're, they play right into it. Right. Like Samsung says, I have an event and we'll, fly you here and they all say okay well i'm gonna get a bunch of clicks if i go do exactly. that and so it's a perpetual it, it's kind of like a circle yeah and i think the only way to break out of it is um some, something will somebody will flinch first right i think uh, you saw this in other industries already like I, again the laptop industry is my favorite example just because it was quite dramatic and i don't think this will happen to the smartphone industry as fast like i think it's just, it's just going to be very slow and boring decline. Like people are still going to buy phones. And the big reason for that is like you drop them and like they break and whatever. Um, and that's the big difference with laptops. But what you saw was like, they just stopped because people weren't clicking it. And you saw this weird side effect where like nobody would cover an event anymore as a result. Um, and then companies yeah. stopped doing it because of that. And I think the only way that it happens is like, kind of downstream a little bit like the PR pipeline as well kind of has to see that tension. I don't know. I think that's another big reason that authenticity matters. I think a lot of these companies um, I've been really impressed with how Microsoft does their like campaigns of the surface, for example, because it's all about like just getting people that are who like it to use it. Like, sorry, not people who like it to use it, people who might not have tried it to use it. And then they use those as examples rather than like elaborate, crazy things uh like trying to get pr placement like i think there's something in that like marketing value of like here is a human who just likes it we did not pay them (laughs) like it's 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 a big difference and uh like getting placement on an article was a lot easier today i just don't think long term it is i mean this ties into so many things but uh, i i think what makes it harder for the phone cell phones Mm -hmm. or more it's going to be more difficult for it to slow down. Yeah. It's just the scale of it, yeah. right? Like the, the the laptop market was never anywhere yeah, near like as large this, as this. Yeah, half of the size. Yeah. And, and even when it was, the vast majority of the purchasers were, were uh, enterprises, mm-hmm. right? They were businesses, right? Like uh, the, there definitely were individuals out there buying yeah, laptops, but like most of the market was yeah. people companies buying laptops for their their employees mm-hmm. and and even though companies buy phones like that's not the majority of the absolutely market. the majority of the market is normal people buying them because i know like growing up we had like one computer right and there were six of us yeah we had right? the same and now right and then it's like there's six of us who all have who all have iphones right right, right? so like <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so and, and I think if you if you even do the yeah I mean in the iPhones probably each yeah each mm. phone costs more than that computer costs yeah exactly and you what I think you'll just see and like I said like it'll just be this it'll be just like one of those like perfect graphs of like a slow long decline I don't think that it will I mean I I kind of see two outcomes I also see it like being this weird dramatic thing where suddenly people stop caring and I, I'd love to see that scenario play out just because it'd be very strange for Samsung and everybody else like. Um, but I think I think the reality is like people buy them and they just gradually buy them less. And I think you kind of start seeing this in the market already is people just get bored and they just keep it for longer, right? Like I'm amazed in Europe by how many people have broken screens all the time. And that's an interesting like problem as that approaches is like, how do you get, how do you stimulate those sales when you can't push the annual? Yeah, it, it, originally it was so much like, Oh, we'll just add new bands yeah. and get a new area and we'll see massive growth yeah. because like the iPhone was never in this area exactly. or the whatever, right? Yeah. Um, but now most of that has been like most of that greenfield growth has been has happened. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And <laughs> um, it, there's still some emerging yeah. markets, right? You've got like India, which is yeah, has still has a lot of people who need phones mm-hmm. in Africa, but yeah, I think the big shift there is as well, like you can't, it's much harder to say, look at this 28 megapixel photo and this 40 megapixel photo. <laughs> like it's just like, it used to be so easy to win on like these things because you could like show people the evidence and now it's much more nuanced. It's like this battery lasts longer or like the processor is faster. And I think it all is going to come down to 
like you, like you kind of said before, it's like the ecosystem play, like building a coherent story and giving people a reason to like buy into that wider ecosystem repeatedly. I think Apple Watch is genius for that. Like it took me years to switch away from like the iPhone because I just loved my Apple Watch. I think I waited for it to finally die. <laughs> like it's a, it's still so good, and I see them everywhere uh, here in San Francisco. I mean, obviously San Francisco is San Francisco, but um, most of the people like I think what's most interesting about that is it's not only in like mm. uh, the yoga pants yeah. moms or whatever it's yeah. like the guy who works at the coffee know, shop amazing. and uh like random uh, you know mm. like the, the waitress at the bar or whatever it may be right so that i i think is what makes it really interesting is it's not just this like kind of higher end mm. clientele that are doing it for to look right to look wealthy or whatever weirdly, it may be um of the like the weirdest example but like sonos went public recently and that's like the multi-room audio speaker market yeah yeah and they um they're fantastic because they've been around for so long so it's just a really interesting company um but they had this weird thing buried in their um prospectus when they were going public they were like look if people buy one speaker they have this crazy repurchase rate uh of like I think people buy three speakers within five years and you're like okay that's pretty slow but then if they can convince people to buy two speakers that goes down to a year, right? And they've got four in their home and then it goes up to like six speed. It's like this whole accelerating curve. And I think what you're seeing with Apple stuff is this very similar like thing is when you're in deep enough and you've got an iPhone and you've been using it for enough years, you you know it's going to be good on the watch. And I think you, like, it's it's almost inevitable. <laughs> like everybody will be wearing one at some point um, because of the, like, you'll see it and you want it and you're just like there and you know, it works with your things. And I think that's the long-term play. Again, I have no idea how the event pans out in there. Um, yeah. It's, it's interesting though. It's just, I, and I think it tied that all of that ties in, like, especially for Apple. Uh, they also, if you have all of those things, then you probably are going to subscribe either to Apple music mm -hmm. or Spotify or whatever on your phone, because that's your primary yeah. device. And either they're going to get all of that mm -hmm. from Apple music or they're going to take 15% exactly. of it from Spotify. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like, it's like, even if they lose, they win in that case because like their devices have become the center of most people's digital worlds. And so that that's why we're seeing their uh, services growth, mm -hmm. the business grow so much right. because yeah, I mean, because even, even if Apple music, loses somebody to spotify like apple still makes yeah no, it's fascinating i think i think like <laughs> it was it was a genius play in that regard even if they didn't bother with like improving it for a long time like might as well just play the game um but yeah i think i think like the next few years will be really interesting like this year it's like inevitable it's fine it's like the second revision i think I, i'm really watching for a year or two from now like i really think that 2019 2020 is pretty like I, I find it difficult to see much innovation. Like, I feel like we're at that kind of awkward moment. Do you remember? I think it was the final iPod. The the final weird one was like yep. the video, like the iPod video. And then the classic came out and it was like the best one. And then that was it. Like we just kind of reached the end of it. And I think like, the, this is, I don't think the iPhone is just going to go away that we don't have the luxury of that because it's not how it works. Um, but I do think you'll just see it really slow down from there on. Like, everybody's going to have like the iPhone 10 or the 10 to what I have no idea what they're going to call that. Um, <laughs> it's going to be terrible. Uh, but all of those devices, I think we'll fondly remember. And then we'll just be using the X 12 and it is very similar, but it works. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the next wave may be around, I mean, everybody's saying mm. this, but if, if we can eventually get to, uh, AR that yeah. you wear on your face that looks good and that works really well. Yeah. I, f I feel like we're still pretty far away well, from that. Well, magically proved it. That. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, right. I saw that and I was like, yeah, okay, well, this is going to be a while. <laughs> um, right. But but that may be like, if, you know, five years yeah. from now, we've kind of slowed down on the phone stuff. Mm -hmm. That may be where we see a pickup. Yeah, there. exactly. But uh, we, I just look at the time. We're we read <laughs> through it. Gone for almost an oh, hour. Um, so let's uh, let's uh, 
close out the show with what what is one thing you find uh unusual in tech right oh, now? Oh, that's such a good question. Oh my goodness, I'm on the spot. Um I feel like I covered it with the uh email thing. You're gonna have to like edit out me um and eyeing for a second. <laughs> um oh, I have a good one, but it's like on oh, hang on one second. Uh I think I I love that we kind of covered up for like two weird things. Okay, I've got I've got one kind of weird one. Um Okay, so I think the weirdest thing that's going on right now is just like the weird land grab for voice assistance. <laughs> it's like not too mm-hmm. weird, um, but I think it is fascinating that like everybody has this personal personality that they interact with and none of them work together. Like it's this weird world in which like we have all these speakers and they have little like robots living in them. <laughs> um, and there's this whole like, how do I know what assistant I can summon and like, where is this going to go long-term? Um, I just have so many questions about like, I, I inundated my house with Google homes um, and like where to from here? Like, will I be able to summon it on your speaker one day or is this like, yeah. I just don't know. And like, I'm really stuck on like how this is going to pan out. <laughs> it's kind of strange. No, I think that's an interesting point, especially like as the, but it 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 all's going to tie mm. back into the business model, right? right? Like uh, uh, as as they the hardware is more and more commoditized, mm. apart from like high end yeah. audio stuff that only a small niche is going to care about, right? Mm. Like what what um what is that going to look like? I know I know like uh, the Echo or the Cortana can talk to the oh, Echo yeah, or the other like, way around. And it's weird too. Like is that that useful? And, and it's weird. It's not done well. No. It's like hey. Cortana, talk to Alexa. Can't let me talk yeah. to Alexa or something like that. I, I probably was wrong yeah. in the way I said that, but it's uh, probably something, something like, like that. This. Yeah, okay. yeah, and and I, I mean, I can see something like that eventually be de- being done really well, but only among the companies that it makes sense right. to do that with. Like, right, uh, Microsoft knows that they aren't going to be there for the vast majority of like individuals yeah. out there they that's not their market right like exactly. but but they 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 are really good at at work stuff yeah, exactly at, you know whether it's for your home your work stuff for your home or work stuff for your job they like they're really good at that and so having cortana focused on mm. that and then the ability to kind of like reach out to somebody some somebody yeah. wow well, there you go. some other <laughs> assistant like uh, i mean it makes sense for them but i i don't see like i i don't see siri and like google home, google voice or whatever it's called google assistant uh, talking to each other well, that's the thing soon. and like just... sonos for example wanted to do that like they released i have the new play bar thing for my tv it's fabulous by the way but um that has alexa on it it's really really cool but sonos's whole thing was oh well you know soon you'll have google assistant support but they've struggled to like add it i i have a feeling that something's going on politically with that rather than technically speaking like and it is, it is a it's, and this is why i said it's weird it's like you could kind of end up in this weird paradox world where if every speaker is a smart speaker which assistant can you summon from it and like does it is it your assistant and like I just, I end up on this weird rabbit hole of like, it should work that way. Um, I almost feel like I should just be able to ask for Siri from anywhere. And like, like the dystopian, amazing future, sorry, would be like the dream future would be being able to do that. Right. Just like summon your assistant, like in, uh, uh, what's that movie with the, oh goodness, I've forgotten the name of it. There's the movie with the guy and he's like talking to the thing in his ear, but it's gone now. Um, oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah begins with i know what you're talking about yeah begins with me and then i was thinking <laughs> her? yeah her that's oh that's why i was thinking of bixby the samsung one but this, like this is this is where i end up it's like why like i really hope it ends up almost that way like i wish that like i could summon my assistant at your house and like it would all just work but i don't think the reality will ever be that way <laughs> yeah i think the closest we'll get to something like that is if like in in her mm. where it was just in his ear yep. right like then at that point if we yeah. do get these like glasses or whatever yeah. and then that's when it starts to get more interesting where you it will actually be kind of like with you everywhere and not speaking out loud into yeah. the, the world 
Um, but that might be a whole different know. company as well. That's the fun thing to think about there is like, who knows who wins that? So there are things to be excited about as well. Yeah, for sure. So, so where can people find you on the oh, internet? I love it. Um, so I'm, I'm a very short username uh, on Twitter. So I'm at OW. I feel like that's the easiest place. Um, but otherwise, uh, my newsletter and like my writing and stuff is at charged, which is C-H-A-R.G-D. I wish I could get it with the like E, but it's impossible. <laughs> um, domain yeah. names are a funny, funny beast. <laughs> I like it. I think it's a. I think it's a good domain name. Yeah. I, when I, wish, I first saw it, I was like, "Huh, like that's yeah, it's better than like charged newsletter." Yeah, exactly. I'm scared to ever lose it. You know, <laughs> like I hate coming up with new project ideas uh, now because I like go and type it into Hopper or something, and I'm like, oh, nothing is available." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, and that's why unco is a, a word yeah. that means unusual yeah. in like some random Love country. Um, uh, but I, unco.fm was oh, available, so that's like that was the reason why. I there went you with go. It. Anyway, so I love this. I love that like domains are the problem always, though. <laughs> Never gets better. Yeah. Um, awesome. Perfect. There. Yeah, so at OW is the easiest place. Okay, great. And and you guys can find me on Twitter at Timothy Buck SF and um, Unco on Twitter at underscore Unco FM. Thanks so much for coming yeah, on, Owen. For it was, uh, it was, it was a lot really of fun. Nice. Thank you so much. <laughs>